What's up, everybody? My name is Erin, and welcome to the Mad Maker Studio, and welcome back to the Monsters of Little Haven. Now, we left off last time where we got one ending out of eight. I want to try to get them all. And I was stuck on this decision of maybe I changed already changed one dialogue option. Maybe I should keep the rest the same, but I think I'm going to I'm going to see if there have any more. I'm going to see if there will be any more branching options as a result of this or ending chapter. So uh, let's do this. Oh, it's all his fault. Maybe. I want to sleep, but I can't. Stupid day. Well, let's play. I have a riddle for you. Sad and beautiful, but not me. Oh, is that your riddle? Yes, it is. Answer me. Okay, I think just for the sake of just finding out if any other options open up, we'll just go like completely opposite of all the choices we made the first time. From this chapter, we obviously need to go back to like the very beginning. I don't know why I thought this would be less complicated, but sure. It's definitely you. Esme covered her face with her hands shyly. Not fair. They were both the right answer. What's the right answer? Oh, I forgot. Oh, I'm sleepy. Kenneth approached his bed and spread the blanket. Oh, go to bed. It's late. What about you? I'll guard the house for monsters. Kenneth waited for Esme to fall asleep and carefully left the room, closing the door behind him. Chapter Brenda. Oh. I didn't think we'd hop into this so soon. Okay. Brenda. Kenneth went downstairs to his mother, who was cleaning up the house after the predator's visit. His father, as was his custom, passed out in the chair. Mom, can I help you? No, there's not much left to do. Thanks. Well, let me help. Kenneth grabbed a brush and began to help his mother with the cleaning. Uh, gonna use any disinfectant there, bud? Thanks. Why are you awake? It's very late. Notice how she asked me that question after I helped clean something? Oh, I put Esme to bed, but I don't want to sleep just yet. His mother shuddered like from electric shock or an unpleasant memory. Esme, how is she? Well, she was crying, told me about the monster again. The monster? Yep. Her diary's full of notes about it. She also asked when Grandma was coming. Carrie promised to visit us the other day. Why do you always call Grandma by her first name? She's your mother. It's just like this. I didn't have a mom as a kid. Well, everyone has a mother. Yes, but it so happens that some kids are separated from their mothers while still very young. Sometimes without even knowing who their mom is. 
Oh, it's terrible. Kenneth's mother was plunged into memories and could not stop herself from continuing her story. I was Esme's age when I was sent to another country. To Australia, to a school for children without parents like me. I suffered there a lot. There were all kinds of monsters and no one needed children. Wow, Kenneth's mom and dad sure aren't, aren't shy about dropping all their trauma on their child. And only when I was 17, Carrie, your grandmother, rescued me by adopting. She had to overcome a lot of difficulties to do it. She is a real mother, but I was already an adult, so I got used to calling her by name. It was embarrassing to call her mom. Oh, that's too bad. I think she'd like that. Mother stroked his head, ruffling his hair. You're always right. Do you know where the diary is? Why? Oh, Hasmi gave it to me. Turns out she was hiding it under her mattress. Can I see it, please? Oh, I, I shouldn't. Why? Why do you want it? She promised to let me read it. Oh, really? I'm telling the truth. Kenneth quietly entered the room. Esme was sleeping, facing the wall. Kenneth took Esme's diary and went downstairs. I didn't even get a choice. Oh, well, here it is. Thanks. Why don't you go get some sleep? Why don't you lie down, close your eyes, and count to a hundred? And if you still don't want to, come to me? Oh, I'll, I'll try. Mom is acting weirder than the dad now. Kenneth returned to the room. He looked at Esme's bed, but found no trace of the evening incident. He made the bed and lay down. Yeah, she went to bed earlier. Kenneth fell asleep before he could even count to 10. The bright light from the window was not able to wake Kenneth, but the noise still alarmed him. When he awoke, the other bed was empty. There was a noise from the yard. Kenneth left the room and went downstairs. His mother was in the kitchen. Her face was tear-stained, but without any emotion. Mom, what happened? Good morning, my boy. What's that noise? Well, someone called Dad and told him the police were coming. Why, though? What did the dad do? Esme's diary lay in front of his mother. <gasps> Did the dad do something to Esme as she wrote it in her diary? The sound of the boat engine starting and metal ringing could be heard in the background. You some the bitch. Oh, and where's Esme? Have you seen her today? Did you not see her when we came home earlier? No, no, I woke up and the bed was empty. Mother hugged Kenneth and whispered softly in his ear in a nervous, choking voice. She's gone. Please remember yesterday. What? What am I forgetting? 
we we did the fox. I guess that was technically yesterday, depending on like when midnight is. What time of day is this right now? Oh, what do you mean? Yesterday she ran away from home again, and I found her. Or again, is this all in his mind, and he's in denial about it? He's oh. dead. He's gone. Esme was found in the water at the pier. Are we talking to a ghost? That escalated real fast. Why are the police after dad? Did the dad kill the daughter? Like, what happened? When you found out, you ran away from home. For how long? But I, I saw her. Steady noise of the engine came from the pier. Did Kenneth kill Esme and the dad's taking the heat? Brenda hugged Kenneth even tighter and then pulled away. I love you. Be strong. Whatever happens, give Esme diary to the people who are coming today. You've got to read this freaking diary. Brenda reached for the rifle that had been there since last night. Your father is a monster. Don't leave the house. Okay, the dad, the dad did something. She checked if the gun had ammunition and went out of the house toward the pier. Are you just going to straight up murder this man right here? Kenneth rushed to the door. Your, your husband and his father without explaining what anything is going on. He saw his angry father coming to meet his mother. Oh my gosh, this this started out like the first the first run through started out kind of slow, slow build up. And now I am like so invested in what is happening. Oh no, it's another option. You're being stay away. I want to do all the endings. I'm thoroughly invested right now, okay. I want to see what the mom's going to do, so I'm going to stay away for now. There was a roar of briskly approaching cars and slamming doors nearby. Now put the gun down. Father was coming closer. Stay back. Stop. I'll explain. The police ran in and saw the skirmish. Drop your weapons. Father made a few more steps towards mother. Thunder rumbled. Rifle first, then service weapons. No. Father <gasps> and mother fell backwards. Both of them? Kenneth rushed to his mother. What? I am so confused. Okay. Okay. We're gonna go. We're gonna go back to Brenda's chapter. Pick the the other option. So I'm gonna fast forward. And then maybe maybe we'll do Bram's chapter. We'll finish out what we can by choosing the different dialogue options from up to those points. And then and then we'll go back to the very beginning and then play it all the way through. Now knowing that Esme is dead, oh show. And we'll see what happens. Okay, let's do that. He saw his angry father coming to meet his mother. Mom, don't! There was a roar of briskly approaching cars and slamming doors nearby. We need answers. Mother heard Kenneth and turned around, and father snatched the gun and hit her in the face with a <gasps> stalk. 
Mother was bleeding from a split lip and nose. The police ran in and saw the skirmish. Graham, drop your weapon. The confused father turned around, pointing the rifle right at the police. Thunder rumbled. Father fell down near the shed. Kenneth rushed to his mother. I got no more information. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna let's close out this episode with with the with the Brahms alternate chapter, and then we'll start from scratch next time. Chapter, Graham. All right, we're gonna fast forward. Graham handed Kenneth Esme's diary. Okay, now last time I took the diary. I'm gonna leave it. I don't think I should. I have to know. I have to know what these other endings are. You know about the monster anyway. Kenneth ran out of the attic. He wanted to tell Ismi he believed her. He approached Ismi's bed and saw her asleep. Kenneth sat on the floor, leaning on her bed. Kenneth fell asleep. When he awoke, the bed was empty. Voices were coming through the door. Kenneth went to the door and peeked outside. There was his mother and a lot of people in uniform. <clears throat> Some water? What? No, thanks. Why are you... Isn't this your house? Continue. Well, Esme's drowning was staged. <gasps> what? Well, earlier you said she'd fallen and had swallowed water. Well, she really had water in her lungs. Esme overdosed on neuroleptics with sedative effect. After that, we assume the suspect, Bram Murphy, thought he killed her and decided to stage an accident. What? Why would he? Kenneth, unable to bear what he heard, ran down into his mother's arms. Mom's acting way too calm. What are they talking about? Okay, okay, my theory stands. I'm remembering... The mom is way too calm at hearing her daughter, like, she drowned as dead. That's horrible enough to begin with, but then getting this other information, presumably from an autopsy, like, no, she had this other thing and we believed it was staged. She's acting way too calm. It's like she and the dad already, already know this information. And I'm wondering more and more if Kenneth killed his sister. Hey, future Aaron here. I recorded this game back in September 2021 and am editing it in January 2022. Having a moment to review the information presented so far, I now believe I have a full understanding of what happened to Esme. At the moment, I don't remember if I bring up this theory that Kenneth killed her again, but Bram is without a doubt 100% totally responsible for her death. With that said, I just wanted to pop in here to acknowledge that past Erin was having so much information thrown at her that she couldn't keep track of it all, so keep that in mind as we move forward. <laughs> Esme's alive! Haven't you seen her yesterday? Where did you hide her? Mom knelt and hugged Kenneth. 
The policeman did not intervene. There was sympathy in his eyes. And maybe that's why the dad thought, like, you gotta let go of the past, get some closure. I don't know. Maybe he thought if he let him kill the fox, he wouldn't wouldn't kill again or he'd get it out of his system or something. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm jumping way ahead into all kinds of con conclusions. But, oh, this is so fascinating. Why did you come? Go away. Esme's alive. They tell the truth. Esme's gone. She was found yesterday, early in the morning. When you found out, you ran away from home. Is that why there was only one glass of milk on the table? And later, you returned, as if nothing had happened. Well, excuse me, we need to know where your husband is. What's this put in all suspicion, like, immediately on the dad? Like, I get it, but... Like, what else is he hiding? What's happening? I told you, I didn't know. I haven't seen him today. On the way here, we checked. Your car is clearly broken, and the boat is in place. Well, I saw him in the attic yesterday. All the policemen standing in the room were alerted by his words. Well, quick, check the rooms and the attic. Kenneth ran with the police trying to get to the attic first. They opened the door and saw a massive silhouette of his father. Oh no, is he hanging? What did the dad do? The body was hanging on a short rope, making his father look even more intimidating and tall. The police tried to keep Kenneth outside, but he threw himself at his father's feet, where a laconic note was lying. I was spoiled. I became like them. Even worse. Sorry. Uh. The policeman took Kenneth in his arms, covering his eyes, carried him out of the attic, and handed him to his mother. She pinned Kenneth to her belly and looked at the events in the attic with glassy eyes. Okay, okay, we've gotten four out of eight endings. So this is where I will leave this episode. This is wild. I go and I buy these games with just be like, oh yeah, that looks cool. Or yeah, that looks like something I'd play. And it just, it blows me away. I I don't ever expect what I'm gonna get. And that's that's great, but like, wow, I didn't expect I'm like thoroughly invested right now. OK, I'm rambling. That's going to do it for this episode of Monsters of Little Haven. Thank you so much for joining me. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And we're going to dive in next time. We're going to start fresh now knowing that she's dead and we're going to see how Kenneth behaves. We're going to pick some alternating branches to get the rest of the endings. But as always, I hope to see you next time.